Hello students. In this video, I will be discussing chapter 12, simple and compound interest. So first, let's get some financial terms on the table. So when talking about loans, usually, um, but although in other situations as well, the following terms are used. So principal, the principal is the initial amount of the loan. So that's the loan that like if you go to a bank and you ask for a loan, the amount that you ask for, that's your principal. Then there's the interest rate, which is the rate, uh, which is written as a percent of the loan, usually an annual percent, uh, that the borrower is charged to borrow the principal for a given amount of time. Um, so again, you, um, let's say this is, I'm recording this in March, 2021, uh, Mortgage interest rates are hovering around 2.5%. And that means if you take out a loan to buy a house, the bank will charge you 2.5% per year to hold on to that money. Um, okay, so something that often gets uh, confused in terms of terminology is the interest versus the interest rate. So the interest rate is a percent but the interest is an amount of money. And in particular, it's the amount of money you pay to borrow the principal. So again, if you have a home loan and the mortgage rate is 2.5% of an annual rate, then that means that um, the amount that you borrow, you'll have to pay 2.5% of that amount a year just to borrow that money. And we'll look at an example. Um, we'll look at several examples. So the interest rate, that's a percent, usually an annual percent. So it's like a percent per year. But then the amount you actually pay, that, is, that amount of money is the interest. And then the balance is uh, what you, you owe the, um, or what the person who is getting a loan owes the person who is giving the loan after a certain amount of time, and that is the original loan amount, you still owe that, and then the interest added on. So let's look at an example. I think this is from your book, actually. Say Aaron takes out one, a $1,200 loan to buy a laptop. The loan has an annual rate of 4%, and she keeps the money for two years. And at the end of that time, she owes the original amount plus $96 in interest. And so I want you to take a moment, maybe pause this video and read this through this example and decide what is the principal, what is the interest rate, what is the interest and what is the balance? So pause right now and try that. Okay. So let's see, the principal in this situation is $1,200. That's how much Aaron takes out to buy the laptop. The interest rate is given right here, it's 4%. The interest, the amount of money she paid to borrow the principal, all right, it's just right here, I tell you $96 in interest. And then the balance is that original amount of the loan, 1,200 plus the $96 in interest which is 1,296. All right, now your book goes through two different ways that interest can be calculated. There is something called simple interest versus compound interest. So first let's look at simple interest. This is usually the kind of interest that uh, is charged between you know friends and family and things like that. Um, and simple interest, remember interest is the amount of money it costs to borrow to in a simple interest calculation that amount of money is calculated by just taking the principal and taking the annual interest rate and then just multiplying it by the number of years that the uh, money is borrowed and it's often written like this i stands for interest equals principal times the rate times the time and let's note that this interest rate is rate per year. So this is going to be, uh, in order for this to make sense, this has to be the annual rate. 
And then these years, um, whoops, sorry, these years, uh, <laughs> it, the time period here, this T is in years, and that makes sense because the rate is rate per year. So you're taking the rate per year times the number of years. Let's look at an example. Okay, suppose, suppose you apply for a $15,000 simple interest car loan. The loan has an annual interest rate of 6% and a 10 year term. And I ask, what does the interest do at the end of the term? And I'm going to encourage you to pause this video and try this for yourself. Okay, so let's solve this. Well, using the simple interest formula, the principal is 15,000, the rate is 6% turned into a decimal, just like we saw um, in the exponential functions video previously. So the rate should be a decimal, the six, so converted to a decimal is 0 0.06. And the term is 10 years, so times 10. So assuming you take out that $15,000 loan and don't repay anything for 10 years, the uh, interest due at the end of that 10-year period is $9,000. All right, so now let's calculate the balance after 10 years. That is the principal, the original amount you borrowed, plus the interest which again, hopefully you can try this on your own first. Well, we have this balance formula, which is the balance equals P plus I. And uh, <laughs> I guess I jumped the gun a little bit. Um, so yeah, in the example above, what is the balance at the end of the term? That is 15,000 plus 9,000, which is 24,000. Okay, so in simple interest, we've got this interest formula, which is just calculating the amount of money you pay to borrow some money. And then the balance is the amount of total amount of money you end up owing, which is your principal and the interest charged on the principal. And we can combine these two formulas into a single formula. And that single formula is the simple interest balance, which if we write it as a function of T, balance at time T is the principal times one plus the rate times the time. And that was calculated by just replacing this I in the balance formula with PRT and then factoring out the P. So let's look at the same example. And now let's calculate the balance directly using the single formula instead of first calculating the interest and then calculating the balance. With the single formula, Again, maybe uh, I'll encourage you to pause and try this yourself. I'm doing this calculation. So the balance after 10 years is gonna be this 15,000, which is your principal, times one plus our rate, 0 0.06, times the time, 10. And all right, I put that in my calculator and got $24,000, which is exactly the same number we got the last time, which is exactly what it should be because we're doing the same thing. So it doesn't matter which way you do the calculation, whether you use the simple interest balance formula or you calculate the interest first and then calculate the balance. Okay, let's talk about compound interest, which is what happens in real world. I mean, any financial institution is gonna calculate loans with compound interest. So let's talk about what's happening. So compound interest is what happens when not only are you charged an interest, uh, you're charged interest on the loan, but you are also charged interest on the accumulated interest. So for example, if you have a loan out for five years and the uh, say bank charges you interest every year, if you're not paying that interest off immediately, then that interest ends up getting rolled into the principal and charged as, so you have like a new balance. And now the interest rate you were charged before applies to your original principal and the interest that you've been accumulating. 
Here, I'll <laughs> let me let me get through and I'll do some a real example. I won't just talk it through. We'll have slides about it. Um, so remember, interest is the amount of money the borrower pays to borrow the principal. And so you, compound interest charges interest on the balance on the principal and on the interest you've accumulated. So for example, uh, suppose you put $500 into a savings account that earns 2% interest per year. Now, I'm actually going to stop right here and say, this is not how people normally think about things. But when you put money into a savings account in a bank, you are loaning the bank your money. And the interest rate on that savings account is what you are charging the bank to loan that money to the bank. And then what the bank does is it takes your money and other people's money and it pulls it together and then it lends it out to like mortgage, for mortgages or for business loans and things like that. And it charges a higher interest rate than you're charging. And it will, um, and so then it makes money on the difference of those rates. But anyway, I know we don't really think about this as being like what we're doing when we have when we put money into a savings account in the bank. But really that's what we're doing. We are loaning money to the bank and the interest that we are earning is the interest that we are charging the bank. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> so that was a diversion, but all right. Suppose you put $500 into a savings account and that earns 2% interest per year. How much money will you have at the end of one year? And if you leave all the money plus interest earned in the account, how much money will you have after two years, after five years, after T years? So this example is to, um, the purpose of this example is to kind of think our way into the compound interest balance formula that we'll see in a moment. So year one, all right, Af after, at the end of a year, you your five hundred dollars is uh, earning two percent interest, and so you have this five hundred dollars plus two percent of the five hundred dollars. Remember, this is um, similar to lots of examples from uh, chapter eleven, the exponential function chapter, um, which okay is five hundred and ten dollars. And suppose you leave that in the bank, and then after year two. Now you're charging 2% interest, not just on that original 500, but then that second year, you're charging the bank 2% interest on $510. And so after year two, you're taking 2% of that 510 and adding it to the original 510. And again, like we saw in the chapter 11 videos, uh, video, this $510 can be rewritten as 500 times one plus 0.02. And so at the end of two years, it's 500 times 1 plus 0 0.02 times 1 plus 0 0.02, which, okay, is 520. And now in the third year, you're charging, gonna charge the bank interest on that $520.20. And in the fourth year and fifth year, you're gonna charge interest in those subsequent years on the money that you were uh, had in the bank and that was accumulating. So in year five, you have that original $500, and then you multiply by one plus 0 0.02 after the first year, after the second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, which we can write in this way, which is quite suggestive of the general formula. Um, and if you're curious, it's $552. And in year T, so if you just let your money stay in the bank, let it continue uh, to accumulate interest. After T years, the amount of money you would have would be this 500 times one plus 0 0.02 T. Now let's talk about the compounding schedule because this is really important when discussing compounding interest. So in many situations, interest on a loan is computed multiple times throughout the year. In that previous example we just saw, we were assuming that the interest uh, is calculated once per year. And actually, it's often, um, in many situations, it's count, uh, calculated monthly. 
Um, so yeah, the number of times that interest is computed each year, that's referred to as the compounding schedule. So in the previous example, the compounding schedule was once per year. Let's look in an, an example. So uh, these numbers I got off the internet and they seem like reasonable. I'm like, this is basically true. Uh, the average annual interest rate on a credit card is, uh, at the time of making this video, about 17%. And credit card companies, what they do is they charge one twelfth of that interest rate every month. And then if so, if you put $250 on your credit card, but you don't pay it off for, for a full year, what's the balance at the end of the year? So that's the setup. The fact that the credit card is companying credit card companies are charging one twelfth of that rate every month. That means they're calculating interest every month. But since the 17% is an annual rate, they're charging one twelfth of that annual rate, one twelfth of the year. And so the compounding schedule is 12 times a year. But okay, let's work through this example. So in month one, how much do you owe? This is Again, the purpose of this is to kind of help us think our way into the um, compounding schedule, um, sorry, the uh, compound interest balance formula. So after month one, we're taking that original 250, multiplying it by one plus the annual rate divided by 12. In month two, all right, we are once again, if you're not paying anything off, you're getting charged now 12th, 1 12th of that annual percent on not just your original, but your original plus the um, interest that you had accrued in that first year or first month. And after 12 months, the interest to 1 12th of the interest has been calculated 12 times. You get this. 250 times 1 plus 0 0.017 divided by 12 raised to the 12th. And so after a year, your interest would be this 295, or sorry, your balance would be this $295.97. So let's now kind of, we've thought our way into a formula. Let's look at what the general formula is like. So this is the general balance formula for compound interest. We take the principal and we multiply it by one plus the annual rate divided by the number of times interest is calculated. And then you take the number of times interest is calculated per year and then multiply that by the number of years. And that gives you the balance at that time. So N here is the number of times interest is calculated per year. This P, this is the same principle as in the uh, simple interest formula. This rate, that annual rate, it's a decimal. It's you're going to be the same. The R and P and T are basically the same from the previous formulas. The new thing is this N, the number of times interest is calculated per year. And again, this time is in years. So let's do an example, which uh, is horrifying, but true. Um, the average payday loan company charges a 391% annual interest rate, and that is not a typo. Average payday loan charges a 391% annual interest rate, and they compound twice a month. So basically every two weeks, they're calculating interest on this you know, <laughs> insane annual interest rate. So, okay, in the setup of this problem, suppose your roommate wants to take out a $1,500 loan to catch up on late rent. How much would your roommate owe the payday lender after three months? So this seems like actually not a totally far-fetched example. You want to catch up on, you need to catch up on your late rent, or you're going to get kicked out. All right, $1,500 or we'll do it. Maybe you have a new job. You feel like you can, after three months, you'll be able to pay this back. 
how much would you owe after three months or your roommate in this case? Well, first, what's our principal? It's this $1,500 loan. What's the rate? So 391% is 3.91 converted to a decimal. Again, this is not a typo. We're used to having rates be, uh, you know, 0.025 or whatever, but no, this is just um, an indication of how insanely high this uh, interest rate is, is that it's, um, the R is actually 3.91. What is N? Well, if the interest is compounded twice a month, N is the number of times per year. So twice a month would be 22 times 12, which would be 24 times per year. So our N is 24. And what is our T? So actually, I want you to pause and think, what is T in this situation? Okay. T is three months. But T is not three. Like, you should not put three here in this calculation. Because remember, time is in years. So three months is actually, three divided by 12 is one quarter of a year. So this is important, very common mistake. People will put like the total, they'll be given the setup in the total number of months, and then they'll use that number for T, but T is always in years. Put it in your calculator and maybe pause and put it in your calculator yourself to make sure you um, can do it while being careful about parentheses and things like that. But the balance, yes, after T years is a horrifying, after three months, sorry, is a horrifying $3,710.08. Off of an original loan of only $1,500, and over three months, you owe more than twice that. Avoid payday lenders at all costs <laughs> is the takeaway here, um, for sure. So, okay, what do I want you to know? What does the book expect you to know? What are the takeaways? One, we have a simple interest formula. It's just the principal times the annual interest rate times the number of years the loan has been taken out. The balance is then the principal plus the amount of interest that you owe. Balance is just what you owe at the end of the time period. And then we have a simple interest balance formula. This is opposed to compound interest, which is what banks and other financial institutions use. The compound interest balance is uh, a formula given by this. N is the number of times interest is calculated per year and time is in years and time is in years in all of these. Okay, good luck on the uh, practice problems this week.